So I'm starting with my natural nail, and as you can see, it's got a very natural square shape to it. But I need to take off these corners if we're going to be able to do a nice streamlined gel extension. So I'm going to file my nail into more of an oval shape, and this is going to allow my form to fit properly, and it's also going to allow me to create a much more narrow gel nail than if I had all that bulk on the sides. The corners really inhibit you from being able to put the form on properly. So now I've got more of an oval shape. These are two bits I like to use for cuticle prep and nail prep. The left is the Skyver bit. I like this one because you can do cuticles and you can do the nail plate at the same time, but you can also use a ball bit if you want to just get around the cuticle area. This bit is really gentle and I like it because it really does two things at once without me having to go around and nip. It does a nice job of taking off all the dry skin, all the pterygium, and also really pushing back and prepping those little nitty gritty areas. So you can see a little bit of dry cuticle coming off the nail plate. I can clean underneath my nail to get anything out from underneath there so my form is nice and tight. And it also takes off those little rough corners on the skin but it does it very gently. I can even clean underneath nails. You can see it on the back of my hand, it's very gentle and you don't use it on a very high speed. About medium is all you need. So you can see I've got all nice and prepped here. I'm gonna clean the nail and I'm using Accents Prep and Wipe. This dehydrates and cleans the nail all at once. So now you can see my nail turns a nice chalky finish. And this is what we're looking for before we put on enhancements. This is gonna ensure that we get a good adhesion to the nail. Now, if you don't know how to put on a nail form, you can watch my video. I've got another video on here. So I've put my form on nice and straight. And I'm gonna start with Adhere. Adhere is the base or bonder gel in the Performance series from Accents. It's a very thin gel and you want to use a very sparing amount. It only comes in the small jar size and that's for a reason. You use a tiny amount on each nail and you're gonna really scrub it in there. So I'm using an Oval 111 brush. This is a Kalinske hair brush. And I use a very small amount on my brush. I'm gonna put some on the nail and if I have too much, I can scrape a little bit off but I'm gonna really scrub this into the nail plate, avoiding the skin, but getting nice and close to the cuticle area and really putting some pressure on my bristles and scrubbing that base gel into my nail plate. And this is really gonna ensure the gel adheres to my nail plate. And then all the other gel I put on is gonna to adhere to this base gel. So it creates a really nice bond and prevents lifting. So you can still see a little bit of the texture of my nail in the reflection. Now you're gonna cure that for a full 30 seconds. Now I've got two gels I can use to create the extension. Structure is the thickest one and I've also got Balance Clear. Structure is our thickest performance gel. It's really great for creating extensions and it does not move at all. So you can do extensions on all 10 nails without a problem. Today I'm gonna use Balance. This is my favorite. I like it because it self levels just a little bit so it's easier for people to create extensions that are smoother. I'm gonna use a little bit of gel on my brush and this is gonna be the tip of my nail. So I'm gonna roll it off about in the middle and then I'm just gonna take my brush and attach it to the gel and kind of sketch out the shape that I want. With gel, there's no padding. There's no padding up and down or smushing or any of that. It's more like a sketching, swooshing motion, almost like you're frosting a cake. And you can see my brush, when it attaches to that, has a little string. The little string is gonna allow you to move the gel where you want it. So all you have to do is keep contact with the gel and it will follow your brush wherever you want it to go. I'm gonna sketch out a square nail here, medium in length. And you can see the gel just follows my brush wherever I go. I'm gonna make the shape that I want onto the form and I'm gonna make sure it's nice and even and smooth. And if there's a little bit too much on the very tip, you can move that back towards your apex so that you get a nice smooth extension. And this is just gonna create the free edge of the long nail. It's not gonna create any of the strength yet. We're just doing the extension portion. So we're gonna flash cure that for five seconds. We don't want it to fully cure because we're going to pinch it. Now pinching a nail really creates a nice C curve and I recommend using a tool 
that pinches evenly. So I'm using some tweezers here, but you want to pinch those corners of your natural nail into more of a streamlined shape. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to damage the nail bed or hurt the client or yourself, but just even gentle pressure is going to really tuck those corners in and you're going to fully cure that now so that it holds the pinched shape that we just created. These tweezers I like because when you squeeze them together, it creates a nice parallel pinch all the way from the sidewalls of your nail all the way down the extension. I see a lot of people also using uh, magic wands. Magic wands are also great, but I usually recommend them only for acrylic. They pinch more in a triangular shape, which means it's not an even pinch, and sometimes it can be too strong for gel nails. Now I've got this fully cured extension, I'm going to take off my nail form. So it's a very thin extension, so we're going to use the edge of our tweezer just to go up underneath that gel and release it from the form very gently. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but I like to get forms out of the way because I feel like they add extra bulk and they're an issue to deal with, with, especially with clients moving around. So push downward away from the nail, and now I've got a nice thin even extension, almost in the exact shape that I want it to be in. Nice C-curve from our pinching technique. This is going to create a lot of strength in the nail without it having to be thick. Now I'm going to use Enhance. This is a more viscous gel, which means it self levels, it's thinner. It's got a little bit of a blue hint, so it doesn't yellow when you cure it. But you can see it's much smoother and it self levels nicely. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a wetting layer, wetting, as in W-E-T-T-I-N-G. This is going to be a wet layer on my nail so that the other gel I put on is going to follow the gel and it's all going to self level together. Keep the cuticle area nice and thin. But see, now when I put a big dollop of gel to create my apex, the gel on gel is going to self-level and create a really nice, smooth enhancement. See the dollop of gel on my brush? I'm going to roll this off right in the apex area, and all I have to do is slightly move the gel around, and it will self-level into that wetting layer that I already created. Keeping most of the gel in the apex area, don't go back into the apex and smush it all down. You want to leave that and then just swish it down to the free edge and it'll create a nice extension with the apex strong like you need it and the edges thin. If the gel starts to get a little bit out of control on you and if you're not used to gel, you can also turn your nail upside down and this will help gravity pull the gel towards your apex area. This is a good technique to use if you've got a nail where the gel is starting to maybe slide into the sides a little bit. This gel is really good at not doing that, but you can also turn your finger upside down. See the apex? Gravity made that apex for me just by turning my fingernail upside down, and look how smooth that is. Now I'm going to fully cure the nail for 30 seconds. And look at that line of light. That line of light is the reflection on the nail. See how smooth that line is? That means the top of the nail is perfectly smooth. If it wiggles, it means you've got dents. I'm going to cleanse the nail. And make sure when you're cleansing that you pull away from the finger. You've got uncured gel on your wipe. Don't rub up and down into the finger because you're going to get uncured gel on your client's finger. And that can actually lead to allergies. Nice C-curve and perfectly smooth on the top. Minimal filing with this. I'm gonna use an Accents file. I'm using 100 grit. You can also use 180 grit. And I'm gonna take the edges off of my file. Files, when they're made, usually have really sharp edges. So you wanna remove the edges of your file before you use it. And I use a new file for every single client. So I'm gonna start with the sidewalls first. And I'm going to file the free edge after. So sidewalls use your file in a parallel way against the nail. And do not flick downwards. You want to stop filing so that you don't make a, a swoop on the corner of the nail. Stop while you're filing your sidewall and don't swoop downward. Do the other sidewall. This creates a really nice shape and very controlled and you're not going to accidentally file off the corners of your square nail. Now I'm going to do the free edge. And depending on the length you can support the nail while you're filing.
And now I'm going to turn the nail to the side and I'm going to concentrate on the sidewall of the nail and really streamline that to match my natural sidewall. I'm using the straight edge and the flatness of the file that's already straight to create those nice sidewalls. And look at the area that you're filing. You really want to make sure that your filing is not haphazard. Filing is a really important part of creating beautiful extensions. Perfect. Now, I could actually probably get away with leaving this, but I'm going to go through the body of the nail and actually file the surface just to make sure everything is perfectly smooth. Again, don't go over the apex area too much. You want to concentrate on the sides, keep everything nice and thin, but keep that strength and that thickness right in your apex area. Otherwise, if you file too much in the middle, you're going to end up taking away all of that strength that you just built. And use very light pressure. I'm using just slight pressure on the gel. The gel files really easily, very light, almost like buffing. And when you file towards yourself like this, it's going to create a really nice smooth finish on the top. Nice and gentle. Just making sure everything is nice and even. Look how nice that free edge is. Now I've been filing my nails a lot doing tutorials, so sometimes my cuticles get irritated, but this should definitely not be irritating to a client or yourself. I definitely just do too many videos with the same finger. So I've cleansed the nail, and now you can see how I've got a perfect C curve. I've got my apex build up. It's thin in the cuticle and thin on the tip, but I've got that strength right on my break point, and that's it. So today I used Adhere, Structure or balance, I used balance, the enhanced gel, a file, an oval brush, and a nail form. Thanks for watching.